Hi, welcome back to this Intro to Seaborne series. My name is Kimberly Fessel, and today we'll look at Seaborne's swarm plot. To build a swarm plot, you can think about sorting your data and then grouping it up by value. Now we just want to add one circular dot for each data point. So for example, I have five ones and I'll just put five circles in the one position. I have two twos and one three and so on. Until eventually I have one circular dot for every single data point. You can also see that none of those circular dots overlap and that is a property of the swarm plot. The swarm plot is also sometimes called a bee swarm plot, and you can start to see why this is. With each of those dots kind of clumping together, they start to look a little bit like a swarm of bees. Now that we know the basics, let's move on to the Seaborn code. Alright, so in order to demo some Seaborn code, I'm going to start off by importing the PyPlot and Seaborn libraries, and I'm going to alias both of those. I will pull in some data from the Seaborn library and drop a couple of null values. So these data are about cars, so you can see each row is a different type of car. I'm also going to set my Seaborn styling to be white grid, and I'm going to do one final bit of data cleaning. Uh, if I look at the cylinders for these cars, most cars have either four, six, or eight cylinders. So I'm actually just going to filter down to those uh, and drop a couple that have those odd numbered cylinders. And that's really just to make my graphs look a little bit cleaner. All right, so in order to build a swarm plot, we basically just call up the Seaborn library and access the swarm plot. And now I just pass whatever data I'm interested in. So let's actually try the horsepower. All right, so here I passed a panda series, but you could have also passed either a list or a numpy array. Those also work. And you'll see that now I have one dot for every single car in my data set. And uh, I'm representing the various different horsepower in my cars. So I see a lot of cars that have exactly 150 for their horsepower. But the real beauty of swarm plots comes when we're actually splitting uh, up against a category. For this, we'll actually use two different variables, both an X and a Y. So let's try the origin of each car for our X, and for the Y, we'll again do the horsepower. So now you'll see Seaborn has split the data into each of the three different um, origin regions, and we have, again, one dot for every single car in the data set. They've just been split out by regions. There is an alternative syntax for producing the exact same plot as the one I just showed you. If all of your data comes from the same data frame, you can just reference string values for X and Y, and those should reference the column names from that data frame. So that'll be the exact same plot. You can also split this data one more time if you have a second category that you're interested in. So let's actually also check the cylinders. This I'm actually passing to the hue property, and what Seaborn will interpret this as is it wants to now give a different color or hue to each of those different cylinder types. And I'm still splitting out by the different regions, I just have a different color for every single dot depending on how many cylinders that car has. So you'll notice for this uh, swarm plot, each of those different cylinder types are all being plotted in the same swarm. So even though I have different color dots here, they're all being plotted with the same swarm representing Europe. You can actually separate those out if you'd prefer. There's a property called dodge. So the default for a swarm plot is actually to turn this off, but we can turn it on, of course. And what this dodge will do now is just split out each of those three groups um, horizontally so that I can see each swarm individually for each of the different cylinder types. Um, interestingly enough, for box and violin plots, these also have this dodge property, but for those kind of plots, dodge is defaulted to true. One word of caution, however, because we are using a dot to represent every single point in our data set, the swarm plot really does not scale well with a large amount of data. But of course, you can always sample from your data set in order to build an effective visual. The swarm plot is considered a categorical scatter plot, so it will give you a sense of the distribution of your data. But let's take that one step further by overlaying the swarm plot on top of a box or violin plot. 
To demo the swarm plot overlaid with the box plot and the violin plot, I'm actually going to create another data frame where I'm just filtering down to cars produced within the USA. And now all I need to do to overlay the swarm and box plots, I'm just going to reference the box plot as well as referencing the swarm plot. Okay. So I can just put both of them in the same Jupyter Notebook cell, and that is going to mean that both of them should be plotted on the same figure. So now I just need to pass in some data. Let's actually pass in the cylinders as well as the horsepower. And the nice thing about these plots is that the syntax is exactly the same, so I can just do a copy and paste there. Great, so now we see the box plot in the background and then the swarm plot overlaid on top. But definitely the styling leaves a little bit to be desired because both of these plots are leveraging the same color palette right now. And so that means I just have the green dots on top of a green blocks and I can't really see that very well. So let's do a little bit of styling. The first thing I can do is actually change the color of the swarm plot. So let's switch that over to black. And now we're able to see a little bit better. We can see the box in the background and then the dots in the foreground, but we can't quite see all the different median lines and those kinds of things. So let's actually make those dots transparent, a little bit more transparent. So I have uh, changed the alpha property, which just makes each of those dots a little bit more transparent. And we can see that the median here for the eight cylinders is right at 150. The other thing I could do is actually change the whiskers for the box plot. You'll notice that one of these data points is being labeled as an outlier right now. If you'd prefer to increase the size of your whiskers, that is a property called WIS. And actually, let's just change it to infinity from the NumPy library. That just makes the whiskers extend out to as far as your data goes, right? So uh, now my whiskers reach all the way out to this last data point for the six cylinder cars. Putting a violin plot with a swarm plot is really similar. In fact, again, this is the same syntax, so I'm just going to paste that in. The cylinders and the horsepower for both of those. And so you'll see we have the same sort of problem that we had in the box plot. Both of these are leveraging the same color palette, so I can't quite see the violins and uh, distinguish the swarm uh, dots as well. So let's do some more styling. The first thing I could do is actually change the color of the dots. Let's actually try white this time. All right. And one thing that's kind of happening, actually, so with the white, we're definitely getting a problem because some of them are extending outside of the violin plot. So one property I'm actually going to change here um, is the scaling of each of those violins. So the current scaling is basically so that each violin has the same area. I'm gonna switch that so that each violin has the same width. That will just allow me to have the eight cylinder violin a little bit wider, and I'm now a little bit more able to see each of those swarm plot dots. Though I could probably do a little bit better than this by decreasing the size of the dots. Let's go down to size equals four. Awesome. One final thing that's happening, the violin plot uh, by default has the box plot in its background. Um, you definitely can't see that when you are leveraging the swarm plot. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Um, to do that, I'll just access this property called enter and I'll say now none. That just turns off the box portion of the violin plot and so that we can now see the various dots for the swarm plot. The final thing I might do is actually change, um, I'm actually going to decrease the size just a little bit more so we can definitely see all of these dots here now. Great. One other thing you might do is just change the color of the violin so that we can see everything uh, with the white. Let's go to a little bit of a darker color. All right, so now we can see very clearly those white um, swarm plot dots uh, on that dark background. So that is how you overlay a violin and a swarm plot. Now let's check out a little bit more styling you can do. One thing we can actually do for each dot is add a little line around the outside of each dot. So now you'll see that each dot has been outlined. This might be helpful if you have larger dots for your swarm plot. Um, so by default, this line width is set to zero and the edge color 
that's actually circling each of those dots is by default set to gray. So you can actually change that edge color as well. Let's switch that to black. Okay, so this again, uh, if you have fewer points or you had a larger dot, this could be helpful in order to distinguish each point from each other. And the final thing I wanted to let you know is that the swarm plot actually inherits from the matplotlib scatter properties. So uh, if you've made a scatter plot with matplotlib before, you know that there's several different things you can do to those dots themselves. So here's our regular swarm plot. But one interesting thing you could actually do is change, instead of having circular markers, you could change that to a star or really any other kind of marker that you'd like. So there's lots and lots of different things that you can access. Uh, that is coming from the matplotlib scatter properties. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about the swarm plot. It's a pretty simple concept, but it can actually add a lot of depth, especially when overlaid with a box or violin plot. Thanks so much for tuning in, and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you'll know when I post new videos. See you then.